Hi, this is Nancy Settle Murphy from Guided Insights. One of the questions I'm asked most often is, how do I balance participation between my introverts and my extroverts? How do I make sure that the introverts can speak up and the extroverts don't take over the show? So I'm gonna give you some tips for driving introverts and extroverts crazy today. I'm gonna to flip the script in a way. And these tips can apply in virtual meetings as well as face-to-face. -face. So um, it, first step is you need to identify or ha ask people to self-identify as introverts or extroverts. Or if you know the group and you have some association with them, you may have a pretty good idea of who's on which side. So let's start with introverts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with someone named Beth, a fictional introvert. So how would I drive Beth crazy? First thing, I would note, Beth, you haven't said anything. You're quiet lately. Do you have anything to add? That would be terrifying and embarrassing for Beth. I might assume that because Beth is quiet, that she has nothing to say or that she's bored, when in reality, she needs time to reflect. She needs time to think. Introverts do not like being asked, don't you have anything to add, if they really feel like they can't add any value, whereas extroverts love to add anything even if it may not add value. Asking an introvert to relay her accomplishments, to highlight her achievements, can be really difficult and awkward for an introvert who really doesn't care to have the spotlight shining on her. Asking Beth to make social chit chat, let's say when you're starting a meeting, whether face to face or virtual, and you're having maybe playing a game or asking people to make introductions in a social way, kind of trying to replicate a cocktail party conversation, not very comfortable for your introverts. Um, and finally, sit, situate your introvert in a situation where there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of cacophony. Um, where things are moving really quickly in an unpredictable way, keep her off balance, make things every, make everything a surprise, don't give her any warning about what's going to happen next. So those are some tips for driving an introvert crazy. Now let's take a look at Ben, who's our extrovert. So to drive Ben crazy, here are some things you can do. Don't call on him. Um, even if he's waving his hand eagerly and being respectfully waiting, let him know it's not his turn. Let him know that you will get to him when you can. Don't allow or encourage any extemporaneous conversation or ideas. Put Ben in a situation where he's going to be working alone or maybe with one other person off of the mainstream. Let's say if you're if you're setting up breakout groups, maybe Ben is in just one with one person and everyone else has four or five people. Don't show Ben any affection. Don't show him any attention. Don't give any warm smiles. Don't, please don't engage in any social chit chat. That would be something Ben would love. So if you want to drive him crazy, stick to the tasks at hand, go down your checklist, go through the agenda item, do not allow any conversations, make your agenda and your format of every meeting very predictable, very consistent, very, shall we say, tedious. Those are some things that will drive Ben crazy. So next time we'll talk about how do we balance participation? How do we make the conversations inviting for both introverts and extroverts and comfortable and safe to speak? So until next time, Guided Insights signing off.